Hi, Mrs. Great House here. We're kicking off chapter 13, which is going to take a deeper look into the states of matter. 13.1 starts us out with the nature of gases. Oh, skunk. Not my favorite creature. Uh, he lets go of his scent gland. Uh, a terrible odor comes to your nose. How does that happen? Okay, that odor is a gas, and that smell will get to you even on a day with no wind. This happens because of the characteristic of gases. Okay, when we look at gases, this time we're going to look at the kinetic theory as our model. Okay, kinetic refers to motion. Probably in earlier sciences you covered the differences between potential and kinetic energy. Okay, kinetic energy was the energy of motion. Potential energy is storage energy. So we're going to relate this all to gases. Okay, any, so the energy of an object because of its motion is called kinetic energy. Okay, a train, a roller coaster, a car, your body can all have kinetic energy, but so do gases. Okay, to set up this gas kinetic energy, we're going to look at the kinetic theory. Okay, first part. The particles in a gas are considered to be small, hard spheres with an insignificant volume. Okay, they're tiny. We can't see them. That's why we need a model. Okay, the motion of the particles in a gas is rapid, constant, and random. Those molecules are moving quickly, all the time, and in any direction that they please. And the third part of the kinetic theory is that these particles are going to bump into each other. They're going to collide. And when they do collide, they're not going to lose any energy. This is an, an elastic collision, no loss of energy. Okay, the kinetic theory allows us to understand these characteristics of gases, okay, and it gives us a model to work with. So when these gas particles are moving, they're going to collide with each other and the walls of their container. When they're moving, they're going to travel in a straight line path, and eventually the gases will fill the whole space of its container. Okay, so gas pressure. Let's talk about gas pressure. How does that happen? When these gas molecules are bouncing on an object, they exert pressure. And as you have this happening with many molecules, of gas you're going to build up gas pressure. Okay, one example that we have of that is our atmospheric pressure, the pressure of our outside gases, our air on the earth. Okay, and all that this is is the pressure that is created from those molecules bouncing on the earth. That's atmospheric pressure. If we were to have an empty space with no gas particles and no pressure, this is a vacuum. So that's these are opposites, atmospheric pressure and the vacuum. Okay, so if we talk about gas pressure, then it's similar to atmospheric pressure, but it's happening inside a container. Uh, gas pressure like gas pressure in the tires of your car. All those gas molecules that are inside there are bouncing off the tire of the inner tube and creating pressure, which you can measure. Okay, we measure gas pressure with a barometer. Okay, a barometer is a device that measures atmospheric pressure. These are used to help um, predict the weather. When the atmospheric pressure changes, it means we could have a storm coming in. Uh, so what happens is 
The pressure from the atmosphere, the gases bouncing on the earth, put pressure on this container of mercury, which then causes the mercury to rise throughout the measuring device. Our atmospheric pressure at sea level is 760 millimeters of mercury. But if we look at the pressure on top of Mount Everest, where the air is thinner, there are less gases, there's less gas to push on that mercury to make the mercury rise in the column. And the average pyramid or atmospheric pressure of the air on top of Mount Everest is much lower than at sea level. When we talk about gas pressure in chemistry, the SI unit that we're going to use is the Pascal. Okay. One standard atmosphere is the same as 760 millimeters of mercury, which is the same as 101.3 kilopascals. Okay. So it's these standards down here that we are going to use to convert from one unit to the other. This is the formula that we'll use. Known over our standard equals unknown over our standard. It's just a simple ratio, just like a mole ratio. Okay, so it's these here that we're going to plug in down at the bottom to convert from one type of gas pressure unit to the other. Okay, so let's do an example problem. We are going to convert 450 kilopascals to millimeters of mercury and atmospheres. Okay, here we go. So here's our formula. We need to plug in what we know. We know there's 450 kilopascals, our standard that goes with kilopascals is 101.3. Our X is going to be our unknown. We're going to millimeters of mercury. Our standard for that is 760. Okay, if we solve for X, okay, then X equals 3,400 millimeters of mercury, which is the same as 450 kilopascals. So now let's convert the same thing to atmospheres. We started over here, 450 kPa's, that standard is 101.3. We want to go to atmospheres, that's our unknown, our standard for Atmospheres is 1, 1 atm, we solve for x, x equals 4.4 atmospheres. So that tells us that 450 kilopascals is the same as 4.4 atmospheres. Okay. So there is a correlation between kinetic energy and temperature, and we're going to get to that, but first we need to talk about average kinetic energy. Okay, average kinetic energy tells us that when we have a gas at a certain temperature, most of those particles are at a certain kinetic energy, but some are moving a little bit slower and some are moving a little bit faster. Okay, here's a graph to show us that. Um, imagine that you have a gas in a container and it's a cold at a cold temperature. So let's look at the blue line. The blue line is going to tell us about the cold temperature. The largest percentage of molecules are going to be at this kinetic energy. 
but we're going to have a few that are moving a little slower and a few that are moving a little bit faster. Okay, the same thing is going to happen at this higher temperature. We have most of the molecules at this high kinetic energy, okay, but several that go faster and some that are moving slower. So when we talk about average kinetic energy, we are talking about those that are at the peak of our graph. Okay, so what happens if the motion of those particles completely stops? Okay, that's absolute zero. Our temperature here is going to be zero Kelvin or a negative 273.15 Celsius. Remember when we were converting earlier Kelvin to Celsius and our formula was Kelvin equals Celsius plus 273. Okay, this is where that formula comes from. Okay, when we're at absolute zero, particles will have no kinetic energy at all. However, absolute zero has never been pr produced in the laboratory, so it is a theoretical case. Okay, they have come very, very close to absolute zero, but never gotten there. Exactly. Okay, so to wrap this all up, we're going to talk about a relationship between kinetic energy and temperature, especially in Kelvins. You can probably already guess it. Guess it. What happens when you heat up a gas? What happens when you take that balloon from an air-conditioned store out into a 90 degree day or in the winter out to a 10 degree day okay there's changes in our gas because why because those molecules their kinetic energy is moving on the hot day they're going to move faster on the cold day they're going to move slower so our big key point here and it relates to kelvin temperature but any temperature system will do the Kelvin temperature of a substance is directly proportional to the average kinetic energy of the particles of the substance. So, increase in temperature, increase in kinetic energy. Decrease in kinetic energy, decrease in temperature. All right, super job. We'll see you in class and do some more examples and answer all your questions. Bye.